knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Have you ever knocked on wood after saying something that you don't want to happen? Or avoided scheduling things for Friday the 13th? Chances are you have participated in superstitious behaviors like these at some point in your life. Superstitions and belief in the supernatural are common throughout human culture. But why? Can we psychologically explain these behaviors? Before we start, we should make it clear that this video will not examine the validity of superstitious behaviors, belief in ghosts, or any other such thing. Instead, we're going to explore the science behind the ubiquity of such beliefs. Why might we as humans be drawn towards belief in the supernatural? One explanation is that it's because of how our minds work. The human mind is built to detect patterns. We like to build structure out of the chaos of life. This results in trying to make sense out of what is in actuality just pure noise. Take for example the law of small numbers. This law is the belief that data drawn from small sample sizes behaves just like data drawn from large samples. But as you might guess, this law is actually a fallacy. It's not true. Small samples don't act at all like large samples. Still, we are driven to see patterns in small samples even when there are none. Let's look at an example. Say a drug is effective in 80% of patients. If five patients are treated with the drug, how many will respond to it? Many people will reason that 80% means four out of five. So in this example, exactly four people should respond to the drug. But if we were to do the math, there's actually only a 41% chance that exactly four people would respond out of a sample of five. The statistic that 80% of patients respond to the drug comes from a large population. If we increased our sample from 5 patients to 5,000, the probability of the drug causing an effect increases dramatically and we get much closer to that 80%. The law of small numbers leads to beliefs like the gambler's fallacy. The gambler's fallacy is when we believe that an outcome that has occurred many times in the past will have fewer chances of occurring again. For instance, pretend that you're gambling on a roulette wheel. Say that this roulette wheel is half red spaces and half black spaces. The ball has landed on black seven times in a row. What are the chances that it will land on black again? Because we know that there's approximately a 50% chance that the ball will land on black or red, and because it's landed on black seven times already, we assume that the ball has to land on red next. In reality, the times the ball has landed on black has no impact on what it will land on in the future. They are separate, independent events. If we played roulette one million times, yes, the ball would land on red about 50% of the time. But in a small sample of just seven plays, there is no guarantee that the ball will land on red next. A similar example of getting tricked by the law of small numbers is the hot hand fallacy. There's a basketball player that has a 50% shooting average. They have made seven shots in a row. Do they have a hot hand? Are the chances that they'll make the next shot greater? No, because the sample size is small, it's actually not surprising that they've made seven shots in a row. They will only match their 50% shooting average if they take hundreds or even thousands of shots. They're also not more likely to make the next shot at all. Because the next shot is independent of the previous ones, they're just as likely to miss it as to make it. What do these examples and the law of small numbers mean for superstitions? Well, we create elaborate causal theories to explain the completely random phenomena we see in the world. Take the basketball player again. Maybe they happen to be wearing a certain pair of socks on the day they made seven shots in a row. They may continue to wear those socks in future games because of a belief that they are lucky. Although it's somewhat random that they made seven shots in a row, the player tries to control their future and continue having hot hands through the superstitious insistence of the socks. Another aspect of the human mind that could cause superstitious and supernatural beliefs is our tendency to over-attribute agency. We humans tend to assume that things occur because something caused them to occur. Did the picture fall because it wasn't fastened to the wall well, or did something in the house make it fall to get us to leave? Was the tree falling and blocking your driveway a simple random accident, or did something cause the tree to fall to keep you from driving in the storm and getting into an accident?
We tend to assign agency and assume that something caused the event to happen, and likely for some important reason. This drive to assign agency to things and events is actually evolutionarily advantageous. Imagine you're a prehistoric human walking through the savanna. A bush rustles. Quick, what do you do? Maybe you say, it's just the wind, and do nothing. If you're right and there's nothing there, then you're fine. But if you're wrong and it was actually a lion, you are now dinner. But what if you say, it's not just the wind, I think there's something there, and start to get prepared. If you're right and there was a lion, you're now more ready to defend yourself. And if you're wrong and there's nothing there, you're fine and nothing bad happens. In seeing agency in the bush, the prehistoric you could more successfully defend against a lion attack. We've kept this tendency to assign agency over the centuries, and it could drive the presence of superstitions and belief in the supernatural that we see in societies today. Another reason that superstitions thrive is because of confirmation bias and motivated skepticism. We talked about confirmation bias earlier when we learned about social psychology and the power of situation and framing. As a reminder, confirmation bias is when we search for, interpret, favor, and remember information that confirms our own pre-existing beliefs and desires. We are motivated to accept facts that are consistent with our own beliefs and desires. If something happens that seemingly proves our superstition, we don't question it. But if something goes against our superstition, then we work hard to disprove it or just count it as a fluke. For example, say something bad happens to you on Friday the 13th. Maybe you fail all the tests you took that day, or trip and drop your lunch all over yourself. If you're superstitious, you'll likely blame your bad luck on Friday the 13th. In addition, because bad things happened on this Friday the 13th, your belief that it is an unlucky day is confirmed and solidified further. But if only good things happen on Friday the 13th, your belief that the date is bad luck is unlikely to change. Instead, you just happened to get lucky on that particular Friday the 13th, and you still need to watch out for bad luck in the future. How does the supernatural and religion fit into all of this? One explanation for believing in the supernatural is that we are motivated to believe. I don't think anyone would argue against the notion that life is often difficult. There are many challenges that we as humans have to work through in our daily lives. On top of that, the world seems to be full of evil and evil people. Often, evil people seem to prosper while good people suffer. We also know that we and everyone we love will one day die. Finally, there's no clear meaning to life. So clearly, life is hard. But one solution to this difficulty is a belief in some hidden supernatural order that will make things right. Believing in the supernatural makes us feel better about the difficulties life imposes on us. Supernatural beliefs could also just be a cognitive byproduct. As I discussed earlier, we have a tendency to see patterns even where there are none. We also find agency and intentionality in random things and develop causal theories for events that rely on hidden agents or forces. Combine these tendencies with the fact that we often fall to confirmation bias, paying attention to evidence confirming our beliefs and working to disprove inconsistent evidence, and you have a recipe for supernatural beliefs. We see supernatural agents as a way to explain patterns, and confirmation bias keeps the belief persisting. So where does superstition and religion come from? Well, we as humans are likely to over-attribute intentionality in the natural world. This gives rise to superstitions and attributes events to persons or agents that we can't see. These basic features of our cognition combine with our motivations for things like keeping evildoers in line, rewarding good people, and a desire to live after death. In addition, these religions and supernatural beliefs are further maintained through culture. Invisible agents maintain moral behavior in a community. For example, one study in children found that kids were less likely to cheat on a task when they were observed by an adult, or told that they were being observed by a watchful, invisible person. The perceived presence of this invisible agent kept children following the rules. Similar findings have been shown in adults as well. We also see that moralizing gods, or those that reward people for acting morally and punish those who break the rules, tend to appear after a complex society has arisen.
This suggests that supernatural agents and the rules they impose may be kept in favor by societies as a way to increase cooperation and moral behavior. All of this together, our tendencies to find patterns and attribute things to invisible agents, our motivations in response to life's difficulties, and the fact that society itself may favor religion as a way to enhance cooperation, gives us a recipe for creatures who are likely to hold dear a wide variety of supernatural concepts and superstitions. We should make one last thing clear. Just because superstitions and religion may be strictly the result of our cognition doesn't make them less powerful in our daily lives. Superstitions can in fact have a soothing effect and may relieve some anxiety by giving people a sense of control over their lives. And in some cases, superstitions may actually improve performance on tasks. One study found that superstitious gestures and words boosted performance in tasks like golfing, likely because they increased self-confidence. So go ahead, wear that lucky charm. If you believe it will help you, there's a chance that it actually will. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.